Hi, this is Henning and Morton from Flip Normals. In this video, we're just going to check out a couple of nice little tips and tricks, most related to modeling and moto, but a few other general tips here. So the first thing we're going to cover is we're going to cover some general pie menus. These are menus which are assigned to uh, control, control 1 to 6. So if we click them, we get stuff like uh, toggle wireframe, toggle cameras, lights, texture locators, grid, and all that. I highly recommend getting very fam familiar with these guys, as they can just speed up your workflow quite a lot. So if you want to toggle a wireframe for this, we just hit control 1 and toggle wireframe. If you want to toggle lights, let's say you have some fancy lighting, it will just toggle this on and off. Toggle the grid on and off, this is something we use a fair bit, because you don't want to have the grid on at all times. Toggle background shading will um, do exactly that. Uh, texture locators, I generally keep them off at all times, so it's super nice just to be able to toggle that off quickly. If we hit Control 2, we're gonna, you can choose the shading mode. So sh uh, between shaded, texture, default, uh, and just a couple of general ones here. This is really useful because you, you often want to change often between like reflection, uh, just so you can see your model uh, in what it actually looks like with super reflections on, and between shaded. Super reflections. Super reflections. Yeah, that's, it's <laughs> it, pretty useful. It's super useful because you can just actually evaluate what it looks like in a more, uh, in an environment where you, you just need to see some more reflections on it, mm. particularly useful for hard surface. So we're going to switch back to default here, toggle the wireframe. And control three, this gets awkward now, like my hand is starting <laughs> to get a bit awkward. So control one to six is not the most comfortable keys. So you might want to remap them. Uh, particularly control six is, I don't have particularly long hands and fingers. So this is a pretty awkward one. And yeah, once you get out, you should probably watch that. Like, it's, it's not, I don't think it's a very good position for your no. wrists. <laughs> no, it's not. This is how you get tunnel car, car tunnel and all that. Uh, but control three is um, general menus. So if you want to work in like a more of an expert mode, you can just disregard all the menus on the side here. And if you need the, if you need like um, the shader tree, you can just, do that shading, the graph editor. This is something I don't I don't use the graph editor a whole lot because I don't understand anything of animation. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I know how to set some keys and stuff like that. So whenever I use that, you know, just uh, the graph editor, info and stats. This is super useful if you want to do like um, uh, select verts based on um, or polygons based on the amount of verts. So if, if it's a triangle, if it's an end gon and whatnot, you can select stuff based on material. So that's, um, that's info and stats. Um, vertex maps, color, general tools, super useful because you can just work again, work in expert mode and just bring up the tools only when you need them. Instead of moving your cursor all the way over here and clicking here, you can just go here and just go to tools. Pretty useful stuff. We also have uh, some, all, some specific tools here as well, like general topology tools and um, stuff like toggle verts and topology mode, uh, soft selection the pen tool to pull the sketch. It's very useful stuff when particularly doing with topology here and general modeling. Control five is, again, just a couple more tools here. Uh, some UV tools and um, just some general modeling tools here. And this is, gets awkward to me now. This is hard <laughs> to actually do control six. Control six is um, general, how is your how are your background meshes displayed? So you can do the same as active. You can do invisible. Invisible is just, we'll just toggle will just toggle um, isolation essentially. So I use this a lot. That said, I remap this to a separate key because I, I, I can barely <laughs> do this. Like this, I've, I've just been doing this a few times and this almost hurts just doing this. So yeah. this is uh, all these menus here, at least all the display ones are just linked up to the general display in the viewport, the 3D viewport properties. You get this by hitting the O key. So here you have tons of additional options as well. I highly recommend just going through some of these. So you can do a lot of interesting things here, particularly like in active meshes. This is quite useful because you can hear it like invisible and you can just set the general shading style to, to a couple of different couple of different handy options here. So highly recommend hit the O key and then you can just go through a lot of these very nice menus here. They're very nice. They are very <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's, very, it's very handy to have that at all, all at hand. Yeah. Uh, so next tip we're going to show you is this is a feature which I'm, I'm not really sure if a whole lot of people knows about. Let's make a new scene here, Control N, and let's just create some general primitives here, uh, like this guy, and um, go into uh, item mode. You can go into item mode, toggle item mode and component mode by hitting the shift spacebar, 
and you can hit, just hit the spacebar to talk with components. So let's just go into item mode and let's just move this guy up here a little bit and rotate him around. I think I accidentally have soft selection on here. So let's just disable that. And there we go. Again, using control four and just enable soft selection. There is, I hardly know where these actually are in menus now, because this is this is what you find all the time. The moment you use, you get used to hotkeys and all that, you just use those. It becomes a lot easier. So once we have our dude up here, we uh, like we just rotate him a little bit around here. Oftentimes you still want to go back to your sentry. Like you just want to move this guy all the way back. So you could of course just go in here and you could just move it back here. But there's a little guy here. This is something I didn't know about until a few years ago where I just randomly hit all the buttons <laughs> like you do. And you click, you click here. And this will now put this back into the very center of the scene. Super useful stuff. So but still storing the sort of original transforms yes. for it. So that's very handy. So let's say we, we go into wireframe now and now you can just hit the B key for bevel and you can just extrude the or bevel in and out a little bit. And let's say you just want to see this from the exact top here now. This can be a bit tricky. Sometimes you need just to see this from the exact top. So you can just hit this one now and you can now go to control space bar to go onto into the, the various views go to top view, and now we can see this from the exact top. There is no ambiguity here. Uh, keep in mind, this only works if you still have your transforms. If you froze your transforms, if you like, if you just move this, like if you were to move this in component mode, like if you were to do this kind of stuff to it, uh, that would not fly. <laughs> like if you- Oh, you know, you're screwed now. <laughs> yeah, now you're, now you're pretty screwed. You, you can't do that. So keep in mind that only move this in item mode where you actually have your transforms. So this is quite handy now. Uh, actually, the next feature we're going to show you is directly related to this. So we have now we now have our dude, and he's up here, and he's now off axis. Uh, and let's say you want to make a cylinder or like a cube or whatnot right here. What you can do, you can just um, you can just make a cube, and you can just move it up here. But we're going to look into work planes right now. Work planes is generally just the grid here. And uh, the magical thing in Moda compared to most other 3D software is that you can actually move this around. Like in Maya, you can't really do that. Max, you have something similar, but very basic. But in Moda, you can move your work plane around. So you can go up here to work plane and you can like, you can hit um, tons of options here, but the, pretty much the only one I use is align work plane to selection. And now the grid has been aligned to this. You can also use the hotkey, which I believe is shift home. Yeah, the shift home key will do that. Uh, the end key will reset this back to where it was before. You can also just hit reset work plane. Uh, and you can just, if you hit the home key while move, while hovering over this, this will just automatically assign it to it. Uh, That's to such the, a cool feature. It's super handy. So th this will, this will, this will just put it exactly where the cursor is. So if you see shift home, we'll put it in the center. Well, home will just put it exactly here. So why is this useful? Well, let's say you want to add some additional geometry to this right now. The grid has now moved, so this is now the center. Meaning that if you, you were to now just create a new cylinder or like a donut thing or whatever, you can you, it, this will now just be placed exactly where your, your, your new grid is. And yeah, this is kind of in conjunction with the reset your transform back to the origin. Like let's say you've frozen your transforms on your object yeah. and you can't get it back. Now you can adjust your work plane to be on the surface of something yeah. and then you can kind of get the same result from that. Yeah, exactly. So so it's a specific example here now. Let's just reset this. Uh, we can go here and just hit reset or we can hit end key. Like Morton is saying now, this is now massively screwed up now. <laughs> like there is no, like this is, this is screwed up compared to your grid. So if you want to have something perfectly aligned to this guy here now, you can just hit uh, you can just shit, hit shift and home, or you can go up here and just align to selection. And now we can again, just make a primitive. And this is now going to be perfectly aligned to so fast, work. so fast. So this, this is one of the, this is one of the features that like, if you don't know how to use the work planes, like you're using mode wrong, because <laughs> it's just so handy. Like if, if you're not using work planes, you are you're missing out on a massive feature, which will just save you so much time in Moto. The next feature we're gonna look into is mesh constraints. This is again, a very handy feature, which is, uh, I find a lot of people don't necessarily use this to its uh, full advantage. So 
what this is, is this allows you to essentially snap objects together, or rather the geometry together. So let me show you what this means. Uh, if you go to um, just a regular menu here, the tools one, and here you have uh, mesh constraints. This will now pop up. And if this is enabled, you see this little button here, this will now ho just hover over this. What we're going to be using here is background constraints. We have a bunch of different options here. So let's make a new layer, just a new mesh layer, by hitting the N key. And we now have a new mesh layer here. So if you set this to point now, this is what's being used by default if we use um, if you use the topology pen tool. So if we go to um, actually let's use the pen tool here now. This is just now going to snap perfectly to the background if this is at your point. This is really, really handy. Everything will just snap to this. So the, the way stuff works in the read topology tab or in the topology tab here is uh, the um, background is the constraint mode is at your background and the geometry constraint is at your point. So whenever we do anything here now, like let's say we're to like uh, add to extend this out here, this will now just snap perfectly to what we have here. We can again go back to um, invisible and now you can just see exactly what it's doing that that this is indeed snapping to the background so a specific example of this is let's say you want to have like a, a sphere made of quads uh, right now this has a nasty pole up here so what we can do we can make um we can make um we can make a new cube here and but then we need to set this to vector vector is a different mode which allows you to scale stuff down and now this is going to snap to the points here so let's go into um make sure this is set to vector and now we can just hit the d key a few times shift d to uh facet this and now we can just scale this down with the set to vector and this set to background this blew my mind the first time i saw this i think this is such a cool wrapping feature yeah. it's it's so handy yeah it's very similar to something like shrink wrap and other software but this is this is far more dynamic. Yeah, because it's so interactive. Yeah. That said, though, once you're here, uh, you can't really do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so once you have this, now you are you're now locked into this. So I would highly recommend experimenting, particularly with vector and with point. I don't f I find that I don't use screen axis a whole lot, but particularly if you want to like, uh, let's say you have a character like um, Mr. Fawn here, and you want to retope with the horns. What I'll often do specifically is I'll, I'll build some basic proxy geo and um, like just a cylinder and extrude this just so you have this extruded all the way down here. And then you can just set this to vector and background and just scale it down. This means that you don't, if you want to re topologize this, you don't have to add every single point just by hand. You can just build some very low proxy geo and just build from that. So next one we're going to look at is a super handy feature just called closed loops. This is something you use use a lot in modeling. So this is essentially that instead of you want to select this entire region here, you don't have to select this by hand. You can just select uh, two or three polys, two polys here, and select another one here, and then you can hit Shift and the right bracket, and now it's going to select everything encapsulated in this. If you want to select the other side, you just do the, the, other, the other way here. This is super handy. Like this is specifically if you want to like select something like an arm or a finger or something like that. Let's say this here is a finger and you want to pose it up. You can just select um, select this and hit the select this one and just hit the key and just hit shift right bracket. If, if you are on a keyboard, which is not an international keyboard, like a, uh, I've had a Norwegian keyboard and we don't really have the brackets. <laughs> Should still be in the same place as the bracket, though. So next to the enter key. Yeah, so that's just next to the enter key. You can also just go into selection and uh, let's just hit one key here. Selection and it's closed loop. So you can see the whatever hotkey this is. If you want to remap this to something which is more convenient for your custom hotkey, whatever country that might be in, this is how you would do that. It's really handy when you have obviously some nice topology, but. Um, meshes that are really close together. Yeah. Maybe you even have intersecting geometry. It yeah. can be kind of tricky to select that geometry properly. Yeah, exactly. And this is also a little, just a little bonus tool here. This is what I believe called a flex tool. This is something that they introduced these these two tools together here like years ago. So if you want to if you want to like post something up really quickly here, you can just select um, some general. Uh, you can just select these poly points here. So this one, and now we can do a closed loop. And now we can hit Shift Y, and this will just 
give you a slightly better way of posing this up here. Oh, we're giving them too many tips now. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is too valuable. Oh, this is actually really handy. So this is a very this is a very handy tool. This is like let's say you want to just quickly pose up like a finger or like like generally an arm or something like mm. that. This is not the substitute for a rigging tool in Anyway, <laughs> what are you talking about? It's great. It's perfect deformation. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just it's just a real nice tool just for uh, if you just generally want to bend something around. So we hope this has been really useful for you guys and that you, you got some nice little motor tips from this. So thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe down below if you want to see more content like this.